This is nine-year-old me trying to reach a rating of 1,000. This is me 12 years later still trying to reach a rating of 1,000. I decided to get back into chess less than a year ago. Faced with the humiliating prospect of losing to a five-year-old in an OTB tournament, I wanted to study and get good. Eight months later, I've gained over 750 chess.com rating points and over 700 USCF rating points. Here's how I did it and how you can too. Like many bored college students, I want to numb the pain of studying with a good cappuccino. That's how I ran into these guys. You might recognize coffee chess from their viral videos, but I didn't. I just saw a bunch of people playing at a coffee shop in LA and thought, hey, I'm bored. I want to procrastinate my work. Why not? I ended up playing the great Carlini first, who's a little bit above my level. I lost epically, but I had a little bit of luck against the famous chess hustler, Boston Mike. I didn't know it at the time, but this video would be made into a pretty popular video on their channel. And then I'm like, well, do you want to bet like a hundred bucks? <laughs> Just kidding, I don't have that kind of money. I liked the group of people, so I kept going back. But I didn't start studying again until I started streaming chess as just a fun thing to do over the summer. But I started to get fed up with some of the comments made about me. I had a lot of commenters saying that they were annoyed that I wasn't that good. They didn't know why people were watching me since I wasn't that good. And I got really fed up, so I decided to study and get good. The first step to gaining writing is honestly assessing where your chess needs improvement. One approach is to review your past games, look at games in which you lost, and analyze them to try to identify recurring patterns or mistakes. Look for missed tactics, inaccuracies, blunders, just areas that you regularly don't do very well on. By understanding where you go wrong and where you went wrong, you can focus on these specific areas to improve and not make the same mistakes in the future. I know that chess.com has this really nice feature where after you play a game, you can analyze that game and it will tell you specifically, okay, this is an inaccuracy, this is a mistake. And just by doing a bunch of these, you're going to start to notice reoccurring patterns like, oh, I regularly get things wrong in this position or I don't see this tactic. Just knowing these weaknesses is so important in improving your chess skill. My biggest weakness when I first started was missing tactics and bad board vision. Here's an example of one of the games I played back when I was a 900. So I didn't really know my openings. I wasn't very confident with it. A lot of beginners think they need to work really hard on openings, but the truth is just being comfortable with one or two is enough and just feeling solid enough in your tactics that you can see a new opening and think you know what to do against it. So this is all looking decent. Um, I missed this pretty obvious tactic because I didn't have very good board vision. That was one of my major weaknesses, something I needed to work on. Um, This isn't something I'd miss now, but it's a pretty common tactic. Just working on puzzles, you'll be able to see these kinds of things. All right. I I wasn't sure what that was, Um, but luckily they missed it. Okay, so this is one thing I didn't see. I just wasn't able to count quickly enough in my head about how many attackers versus defenders there were. This normally is a pretty nice tactic to spot, except for the fact that it doesn't work. They can just take. So as you'll see, both me and my opponent are making mistakes. Never ever resign at this level because as you see, I was making tons of mistakes, but so was my opponent. Um, I'm not really sure what to do here. Yeah, this this isn't great. Takes, takes, and I hung my queen. So this is a very common thing that 900s do. And you might think, oh my god, I'm so much better than this. Why am I doing this? But it's such a simple fix. And basically one of the best ways to prevent hanging pieces like this or see your opponent's hanging pieces is to do a lot of tactics. So now that you've gone over a game and you kind of have an idea of where you're going wrong, I want you to pause this video and take a moment just to like... Write down a huge list of everything you think you can work on, just your major areas of weakness. For example, my biggest weakness starting out was missing tactics, bad board vision. As you could see, I'd regularly hang pieces, and it was taking me way longer to spot things than it should have, which is a huge problem in Blitz. This was especially frustrating in my Blitz because I feel like I'd flag winning positions, or I felt like I was stronger than my rating, and I wasn't sure why I wasn't seeing things, why I was flagging positions. It really made me want to give up, but you just have to keep going. And the biggest thing that helped was just spotting these areas of weakness. So as you're writing down your areas of weakness, mine would be time management, board vision, tactics. Just look at that list, and then we're going to start to look at that list and look at, okay, how can we help and improve these areas of weakness? It's important to note that these areas are often things you like to study least, and that's a lot of the reason why other areas have been improving a lot faster than these areas, and you're actually being held back by these areas of weakness, so it's so important to improve them because you're only as strong a chess player 
as your weakest skill. So my first major area of weakness was tactics, 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 and I'm not alone in this. I'd say for most to I'd even be as bold to say all people at my level when I started out around 900 to 1400 chess.com. The easiest cheat code in improving is just doing a bunch of tactics. And there's so many ways to do this. There's so many resources on the internet that makes it so easy. One of my favorites is, of course, chess.com puzzles, but there's also other apps if that's not your thing, like Chess Tempo has really good free tactics puzzles. One of the biggest issues in this crowd of like 900 to 1400 level players is just not recognizing patterns quickly. Not only do you miss out on taking opponent's pieces, but you're not really going to recognize when you're putting your queen in danger of a fork. You're not going to see tactics and potential weaknesses in your own position. Puzzles are a great way to sharpen your calculation skills and improve your ability to spot tactical opportunities in your own game. Solve puzzles regularly and learn from the solutions to reinforce these tactical understanding. So this means if you get a puzzle wrong, don't just move on, but go back and really understand why you did it wrong. Even better if you can just redo the puzzle a couple times and get this into your memory. Another one of the weaknesses on my list that will honestly be on most of your guys' list is endgames. Now, endgames were so boring for me, I still don't really like them very much, but I used to actually avoid queen trades in my games. And this is really dangerous because now I'm at a handicap, because now I'm trying to avoid queen trades as well as keep a good position. It's just very hard to maintain and there's so many positions in chess where you just need to say okay i'm better in the end game i'm gonna go for it and i wasn't prepared to do that so one of the main things i had to work on even up until when i got to like 1500 blitz level was my end games and uh chess.com has something to work on that i think you can put in a position maybe an end game position from one of your games from a famous game and just go through it with a computer around your level they also have lessons on end games. I know, again, another app I mentioned before is Chess Tempo. They have good end game puzzles, but I think you could pretty much find end game puzzles anywhere. Another really, really good book is Dretzky's uh, End Game Manual. It's a little bit difficult, but if you're ready for a challenge, it's worth a slow walkthrough. There are also a bunch of easier books, some um, manuals, and I'll I'll link them below. So now you've looked at your list of weaknesses and you're doing them and you're like, I'm bored. I hate chess. Why am I working on my weaknesses? I don't like any of this stuff. Why am I playing in the first place? I've been there. I really didn't like what I was studying. So every now and then you have to sprinkle in a little things that add inspiration. And this is super, super important to get this inspiration to keep going from somewhere. And what works for me might not work for you, but I'm still going to tell you what it is. And you can kind of take a look at some possible ideas of how to add that little bit of sprinkling into your practice. Like, let's say your practice is like eating broccoli or something. You, you need your vegetables. You need your vegetables, but you can also have a little cake sprinkled in there. And for me, that was going over master games. I always find it so fun and interesting to look at these grandmaster games, to look at the tactics, and especially old master games I found super inspiring. I wanted to be like Morphe or Tall, you know, sacrificing all these pieces. And this was important for my chess study because I'm getting a positional understanding by looking at these games. But it also was most important for my study just because it was inspiring me to keep going with the things I didn't especially like. I'm not sure what this will be for you. Maybe it's going over tactics. Maybe it's looking at your own games. Maybe like me, you like to look over Grandmaster games or learn a little bit of chess history or watch your famous favorite streamer, you know, Hikaru or watch the Boteses. I don't know, but whatever keeps you going in chess Whatever keeps inspiring you, just make sure to sprinkle as much of that into your practice as you can while still focusing on the things that are important. So we've all been there. We've been practicing. We've been working hard and our ratings just not showing it. For me, this happened uh, around in December. I'd finally reached 1500 Blitz, which I was really, really proud of. But then I would start playing and I'd get all the way up to 1600 and then all the way down again to 1200 and 1300. And my play was just all over the place. I felt like I wasn't improving and I was like, why am I not improving? I'm playing eight hours of chess a day, <laughs> which I was, but the chess I was playing was all Blitz. And that's something very important to note. Like you can be studying a bunch of chess and wonder why am I not getting any better? And sometimes it's just a natural stagnation and you're about to get so much better and it's all gonna get put together in your mind. But for me at the time, what was happening was I was just studying the wrong things and practicing the wrong things, which is a lot of lids. So something that helped me a lot was starting to focus on OTB tournaments. And honestly, I cannot stress this enough. There's nothing as good for your chess as OTB tournaments, classical time control. 
Because when you lose a game in Blitz, you may be like, I lost it because I hung a queen. I lost it because I missed a tactic. Sometimes there'll even be like real things you can work on sprinkled in there. I think it's very important to look at Blitz games. But when you're doing a classical game, if you lose, you're really able to pinpoint that weakness because you're trying your absolute hardest. You have the time to think this is just something you need to work on. And it really stretches your mind because you have to calculate a lot. There are no excuses of time. You cannot be lazy. You're just working the hardest you can. And that's why OTB is invaluable for figuring out what you need to work on. So if you're here and you're like, I'm not ready for an OTB game, Yes, you are. Sign up right now. You know, pause this video, find your OTB game, sign up, get a tournament. You know, no matter what happens, even if you lose, at least your chess is going to get better. And you can thank me later for that one. Still, there's going to come a time when maybe things just aren't going your way. You did an OTB tournament and you didn't do well, or you've been playing Blitz forever and you just got to your all time low after peaking. There's going to have those moments where you're like, I want to quit chess. I hate this. Why do I do this? And, you know, that's normal and that's natural. For me, I had a few of those moments, but um, one of them was after one of my OTV games when I had a completely winning position against someone lower rated than me and I got a little cocky. I was like, oh, I'm going to win this. This is great. Like, this is easy. I'm going to have my win. And then I just like hung a bishop. Like, I, I missed such an obvious tactic. I took maybe 10 seconds to move OTB when I had plenty of time and I lost the game. I was just so frustrated. I felt my lead slipping away. I was like, what if I'm not as good as I think I am? I'm not performing to my ability. Maybe I'm just not good at chess. Maybe I'm just not talented. And at the same time, my blitz was, you know, stagnating. I'd been the same level for a few months, I felt like I was working hard and I just didn't know why it wasn't clicking. I was complaining to my friends. I was like, I'm going to quit chess. I'm going to quit chess. That's why I recommend having a buddy to go through this journey with you, because honestly, without my friends leading me through it, I, I don't know where I'd be right now. So for me, my buddy has been like several chess players on the same journey as me. And also my Twitch chat has helped keep me responsible for my own journey. And, you know, they're leading me to a place where I feel comfortable even when I lose. And that's so important to have just like that energetic, motivating, uplifting presence in your life. And I promise you, if you feel like you've hit rock bottom, like things are going to turn around. And for me, that was, you say, a huge team tournament in the East where I was going to be playing people rated maybe like 800 higher than me. Because how this tournament works is... You're on a team and you're either your board one to board four in lineup of rating. I was the board four, obviously. And that meant I was going to be playing just people of a random strength level. And since our team was doing pretty well, that ended up mostly being 2000s USCF. And at the time I was rated around 1275 or so USCF. So that's a huge gap. And I was like, I'm not going to win any games. Like I haven't been doing well in my last tournament. I haven't been doing well online. I ended up getting 2.5 out of 6, and my rating went up like 150 points. So I was so excited about that. And the moral of the story is, I mean, there's not always going to be that one moment where it always clicks. But if you're at rock bottom, just keep working, and it will get easier. Always have those buddies who can cheer you along, because everyone in chess has been here. Like, Magnus Carlsen has been here. Hikaru has been here. Everyone's been at that moment where they're like, I'm going to quit, and you just need to push through it. You need to keep going. You've watched this video. You know what you need to work on. You know what you need to do. The important part is just like sitting down and doing it. So you've made it this far. Here are the main takeaways. Write down your weaknesses. Really look over your games. Honestly review them. I know all of us chess players have a little bit of an ego, but put it aside. Figure out what you're weakest at and figure out a good game plan that you can execute to fix these weaknesses. Next, the most important thing is to always be doing tactics. I feel like anyone at any level can always help with tactics. Like, it's always important to do tactics. I know people stress this, but I'm going to keep doing it. Guys, you should be doing tactics every single day. And more, <laughs> if that's possible. You should be doing tactics as much as you possibly can, while also making sure to work on these things that maybe you're not as strong at. Uh, the next takeaway is mainly just find something that really makes you love chess, like the reason you got into it, whether that's watching a streamer or looking at master games, like find that one thing that motivates you and make sure to sprinkle it in within your chess study while also making sure to review all of your games. And finally, make sure to do OTV games. Please, please, please do classical games. 
Find a buddy who will go with you to these classical tournaments, who will be there if you lose, just someone to cheer you on. And I tr trust me, you're going to do great. This is how I ended up going from, you know, 900 chess.com plits to I just beat a 1920 USCF in my last tournament. So I'm so proud of how far I've come, and I can't wait to see how far you guys have come, too. Please leave a comment below talking about some of the things that you struggle with what in your chess training and some of the things you liked in this video. It would really mean a lot. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. Please leave a comment with feedback. I really, really am looking forward to hearing how this goes for all of you guys, and I hope you continue to do what you love.